And Justin here. Today we are checking out Californication by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, featuring, of course, the incredible guitar playing of John Frusciante. Really, really great guitar player, and he's got some really tasty things going on in this. Uh, I'm going to show you kind of a simple version, which is quite, well, pretty much exactly what was on the original recording, okay, which is simple. But I'm also going to show you how to mix it up with the bass part, because for most people, I guess, well, definitely for me, the part that I kind of hear in this song is a mixture of the guitar part and the bass part together. So I'm going to show you a little way of doing that, just because it sounds cool if you're playing it on your own or whatever. If you're playing it in a band, you definitely want to stick with the simple one and give the bass player his chance to shine doing the little uh, fancy lead kind of lines on, on the bass as well. There's a few ways of simpling up some other parts of the song as well. Uh, you don't really need bar chords. It's pretty much all beginner kind of open chords other than the chords in the background of the solo okay we're gonna I'll show you those as well uh, I'm gonna do the solo in a separate lesson but I would strongly urge, urge you to uh, have a go at working out the solo on your own because it's a pretty simple one to work out but uh, anyway enough nattering from me let's get to a close-up and check out how to play it So there we have, that's it. That's the main guitar part that we hear at the beginning of the song, and uh, all of the rest is done by the bass, which I'll show you too. But let's start off with this. It's an A minor chord. We're not using the third finger, so we can lift that off. And you actually want to start with the first finger off as well, but you just want to make sure that it's in position. You don't want to start with it kind of miles away. So get your A minor chord, third finger off, and then just let your first finger kind of hover. And you're going to use all down picks on this. So I'm not going to worry about showing you a close up for the picking hand. We're going to play fifth string, fourth string, second string, then put first finger down, first fret, second string, and play that string again. So fifth string, fourth string, second string, second string again. One and two and three, four again. One and two and three, four. Really important that you get that count nice as well, especially if the bass player is going to do the whittles in between. Make sure you leave enough space. Now the second chord is an F chord, but we don't, again, we don't need to worry about getting the bar down and all of that sort of stuff. We're just playing the bass note, which is the first finger, first fret of the thicker string third finger, third fret of the fifth string. Then we're going to play the open G string, okay, the third string there. And then we put our second finger down in the second fret of the third string. So sixth string, fifth string, open third string, and then put the second finger down. Same rhythm as the other one. One and two and three, four. Again on the F, one and two and three, Four. Now moving the A minor, two, three, four to F. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Plenty of practice with that. Really good fun one to play along with the original recording. And let Flea do all of that bass playing. You can just keep it nice and simple and play along. It's really nice. Good feeling. Okay? So you really want to make sure you've mastered that before you start adding in the kind of the, the guitar emulation of the bass part. Now, the actual bass part, there's two kind of different variations that he plays on the F. It's the same both times on the A minor, though. So let's start with that. That's the little riff, okay? Starts exactly the same, but then we play the fourth string again. 
Then we lift off second finger, leave first finger down, we want that note to ring through. Lift off second finger, play the open D string, then we're hammering on, flicking off the second finger. So literally, if you play the open string, give it a good hammer down with that finger, and then kind of flick it off. If you start even without picking, you can see you can kind of flick it and get the string to ring out, okay? One and two and three and four and, and we finish here with the uh, third finger in the third fret of the fifth string. So that's what we're adding in. The, this note, then hammer on, flick off on the open D, and then third finger, third fret of the fifth string. Now, it's uh, with the count, this little hammer on and flick off uh, is a 16th note triplet, which is really awkward to count. So I'm just going to suggest that you count on four, four, and. Okay, so this would be a nice triplet on beat four, and, and you want that note to fall on the and after four. Let me do that slowly so it kind of makes sense and I'll do the count along with it. So, one and two and three and four and. Okay, again, one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four. It's the easiest way to think of it, trying, trying to count that gets really, really sticky. So I'd start with that A, make sure you got that down first. Now on the F chord, starts the same, but what's important to realize is that uh, the bass part on the first time the bass goes through the riff, when this note is played here with the second finger on the second fret of the third string, you also play the open D. Okay, so at that point, you're playing those two notes, the open fourth string and the third string. There. Again, all down picks. So playing sixth string, fifth string, third string, and then at that point you're going to play the fourth string and the third string together with like just a little one movement of the pick. Then you play the D string again, which is the fourth string, and then the fifth string. And when you play the fifth string, it can be a good idea, this is kind of getting a bit fussy, but it can be a good idea to let the underneath of your third finger there mute the fourth string so it doesn't keep ringing out. Yeah, as you play that last note, just let the underneath of it touch the fourth string. I mean, it, like I said, that's pretty seriously fussy, but worth thinking about. So uh, let's look at that variation first, and then I'll show you the second one after. So we got from the A minor, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, really important that you get that count right. So uh, I'd give that a little bit of a practice as well. Write down the count if you're not sure about it. Make sure you can do that. Now the second time, it's just slightly different on the F. Okay, so it starts the same, but then little finger goes down the third fret of the fourth string, you play that and lift it off and play the open D. So first time. Second time. So it just alternates between those two different patterns there. Again, you don't have to stick that in, you know, if you're playing along, just stick with the, the basic guitar one. You don't need all of that other stuff, but, you know, personally, when I was playing it, I always liked having them. Just sounds cool. Sounds more like the record if you're playing it on your own. So the next part we've got here is this little uh, C chord to G to F to D minor. Now, it, you could kind of do an open chords version if you wanted to and just play regular C, G, F, to D minor, if you want. But I think it kind of sounds more authentic and it's not particularly difficult to do it. Though I'm pretty sure that this is how John's playing it. I've watched a few videos and it looks like this is what he's doing. So it's uh, first finger in the third fret of the fifth string, then third finger, fifth fret of the fourth string, 
little finger in the fifth fret of the second string. Very, very common kind of uh, shape this for John. We're just playing fifth string, fourth string, second string, back to fourth string, okay? It's a C chord. Then we move to a G chord, which you'll notice is exactly the same as the F chord that we used in the intro, but up two frets. Uh, the pattern again, sixth string, fifth string, third string, fifth string. Move it back to the F. Same picking pattern, you should be familiar with that one. And on the D minor, we play the fourth string, the third string, and then a little strum that strums the thinnest two strings. Okay. If you want these kind of dreams, it's Californication. Okay, you could, if, you, if you're struggling with doing this kind of, these sort of grips, you could just go C and want these G and dreams, it's F and going to D minor. Okay, so, but I would recommend, you know, have a go at doing that. It's not particularly difficult good skill to get under your fingers anyway, so I would definitely recommend that. So the next part is where it starts strumming, and I'm going to show you the strumming in a wide in a sec, but the chords, first of all, are an A minor, it's regular old A minor, to an F major 7. Okay, now uh, John's uh, big on using the thumb over the top. In fact, uh, I should have pointed out earlier, actually, that the main riff... Pretty sure John plays it like that with his thumb playing that bass note. It feels really awkward for me to do that. It's so much easier for me that way, but I'm pretty sure John does it that way. It's definitely easier to use these fingers if you're going to try and put that riff in than uh, thumb over the top, but uh, probably even for this part, I would suspect John would do it like that, using the thumb on the bass notes, because that's kind of pretty intrinsic to his style, but it's, it's difficult for most people, so I don't really recommend that you get into uh, doing that. But on these, on the chords, back to the chords part, which happens just before the chorus, you've got the A minor, then to an F major 7. So we've got their thumb playing the bass note, optional, muting the 5th string, then 3rd fret, 2nd fret, open thinnest string. Okay, that's the A ma uh, an F major 7. The Like I said, I'm going to go through that strumming in a second. But one little thing that I'll point out that uh, John does often live, uh, it doesn't sound to my ear like he's doing it on the record, but it's um, putting little finger down there on the third fret of the thinnest string in the second uh, half of the F major 7 bar. So A minor, F major 7, there. Don't have to do that, but you know, it's a very Frischardi kind of a stylish thing to do there. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, I'll go, like I said, I'll go through that strumming again with you in a second in a wide. Uh, let's finish off the uh, chords first of all though. So in the chorus, very, very simple. C chord, regular open C chord, G chord. Again, I'd recommend using this two finger G, so third finger playing the thicker string, third fret, and muting the fifth string, open, open, open third fret with a little finger there. It's probably the easiest way in this particular chord sequence. So C to G to D minor. Again, you could use your third finger, D minor, like that doesn't really matter. I prefer little finger. Then to A minor. C, G to D minor. Okay, so the chorus again is C to the G to D minor to A. C is gonna G to D minor. Okay, and then we're back to the riff again. Now, I am gonna show you the chords here uh, while we're in this close-up for the solo, but if you're a beginner, you're gonna find them pretty difficult because there's uh, quite a few bar chords going on. So, uh, first one is an F sharp minor bar chord, okay? If you're a beginner guitar player, this is gonna be a killer of a chord. So, first finger's barring the second fret, third and fourth fingers are both going in the fourth fret of the fourth and fifth strings. So it's one bar of that, and then it's to a D major seven chord. It's a lovely little chord there, using your first finger to bar the thinnest three strings of the second fret and the open D string. You don't play the thickest two strings. Okay, so... Then 
to A and E major. Okay, so it's just doing F sharp minor, D major 7, F sharp minor, D major 7 to B minor. Okay, nothing on the thicker string, second, four, four, three, second, full B minor bar chord. Then it goes to a D chord, pretty sure it's a bar chord there, actually, a D bar chord and an A bar chord down to a regular open E, but there'd be definitely no harm in uh, playing D, uh, B minor, D, and then the A to an E. You could use those open chords if you want. Um, but if I try and just sing the, song, uh, sing the solo along, so... So you can see there at the end it just repeats around that B minor, D, A, E. I started using open chords there at the end, uh, but you could be using those bar chord versions uh, or the open chords, it doesn't really matter. So hopefully the fretting hand is all sorted out now and we're going to just talk a little bit about the rhythm and uh, we're going to start off with the rhythm pattern happens just before the chorus on the A minor to the F major 7 but uh, in order to learn a rhythm pattern properly I recommend that you just uh, mute off the chords so you don't have to worry about uh, making the chord changes or anything you just really focus on that rhythm. Uh, so the rhythm pattern we got is this. Up down down 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 up down. Now I'm going to slow it right down for you. So uh, and do the count as well because uh, hopefully that'll help you get it. So uh, so nice and slowly for you. Now we got this one e and a two and three e and four e and one e and a two and three e and four e and down up down down up down down up down down. Up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And really, really important in case you didn't notice, my hand doesn't stop moving. Okay, and you can watch John do it as well. It's exactly the same. Really helps you lock into the groove if you keep the hand moving, especially on when you get the kind of faster tempos or kind of funk styly stuff. Really important that the, the hand's consistent. Okay, so down, up, down, 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 down, up, down. Up, down, down, up, down, down. One E and a two and three E and four E and one E and a two and three E and four E and. Okay, really worth writing down one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, and making sure you get this one E and a two and three E and four E and one E and a two and three E and. 4 E and, okay? So if you can write it down, you can see it, and you can see where the down and ups goes. Remember that the down strums will always be on the beat, the numbers and the ands, and the E and the up will always take an up straight. That's how that kind of funk style strumming works, and uh, John's quite strict about playing that sort of stuff, you know? He doesn't tend to deviate too much from that kind of idea. Um, because it works and it sounds really good, you know. Um, and so the only other real, the, the rhythm parts, oh, actually we've got the chorus and the solo to go. So the chorus, really simple. Down, 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 down. That's it. It's all just down to You can see him on the, I think it's the Slane gig where he's playing. You can just really see him. He's pounding life out of his guitar there, you know, really, uh, really going for it. But just, just simple down strums. <laughs> Except for that very last D minor, which is coming on the and after four. So if I just count it for you, so you can see that it's just, it's just pushed forward, like bought, uh, slightly earlier than you might anticipate. It's called a push. So C, two, G, four, D minor.
Okay, so really important that you push that D minor forward there because the bass and the drums will all be joining you for that, that little push. Um, after it plays the verse again on the second chorus, it's actually the second chorus is twice as long. So on that D minor, it's still pushed forward, but then there's a little bit of kind of scrambly uh, strumming goes on in between. Um, I haven't written out exactly what it is, but you, you kind of get this uh, C. It's just really like, you know, going for it a bit like a drum fill. Uh, of course, again, really important that you stay in time. It's not just kind of random strumming. But uh, as long as you're keeping that hand moving again, you know, even if I'm doing downstrokes, down, 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 you can see I'm still kind of keeping that pulse. Da -ka -da -ka -da -ka -da. That's the pulse that my hand's feeling. Even though I'm just doing that big down strum, it's just the movements in between can be quite small, but it really helps to kind of to lock into that groove there a bit. Um, the only other part, really, for, that we need to look at is the solo. Um, <laughs> it's actually the same as that little bridge part, uh, except here. I mean, it's just really trying to keep that hand moving consistently. And I'd start off with that same pattern, the down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, that we talked about for that, uh, the pre-chorus. It's definitely starting off with that. Assuming my memory's uh, fairly correct. So I think it's, it's close, if not right, here. One and two and dunk and two. It's just all down strokes and occasionally hitting some up strokes in there as well. Now, if you're a real beginner, a, good, a kind of a cool thing about this solo is that you can leave off the chords in the solo, which are all bar chords, and just do the solo itself, right? Now, the solo is a really, really easy, as far as guitar solos go, it's a really, really easy one to work out, right? It's, it's all in the same scale. It's all using the A major scale. Um, it, it kind of moves a little bit about the neck, but I really recommend that you have a, a, a go at learning it yourself. You know, it's, it's very, very simple. I'm going to do a lesson. I've just transcribed it, um, which is why I'm so confident that I, that I think it'd be a great one for you to have a go at uh, a go at learning on your own. Because learning to transcribe songs on your on your own and use your ears is a, such a valuable, valuable skill. And this kind of solo is exactly the sort of solo that's a nice one to start off with. Can, you know, can build your confidence up. So. Uh, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun playing this song, so uh, please hit that subscribe button if you dig what I do, and go and check out the website where I'm going to put some additional tips and uh, the strumming patterns and stuff like that up there for you. So uh, do check that out, and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.